I 3D printed something again, and you might want to watch this. My name is your dad, and instead of extending this intro of this video, just click like, and let's watch it. Now obviously, every single good model that could ever be made has to start out with a good 3D print. I always make sure that my prints are completely dried before I even bother curing them because you end up getting a horrible milky mess on them. I also like to make sure that the parts that I need built are built now because now is the time that you need to fill any gaps that you may need to fill later on. You don't want to find this out after you spent hours painting. Also, this is the time when you're going to break things like I did. I broke the parts that are very small on this model, particularly this buckle, and this was a very upsetting moment. However, I have a 3D printer. I did not forget that I had a 3D printer, so I used my printer to make some more parts. All I did was cut this part out in the program, and then 3D printed it again. Once I had got the part, the new part that I needed to put on the model, I just glued that part back on. Now, some of you might say, you should probably pin this, and I would agree with you, if for in fact that this part wasn't so small, it will probably break if you just sneeze near it. So, realistically, it doesn't really matter, just as long as the part is back on again, and I will now be very careful henceforth around that part. Then it is time to sand all the bits and pieces. Usually I like to put the model together to check that pieces fit properly. Also, if I'm going to keep some parts separately, I need to make sure that they fit into each other nice and snug. As you can see, this little piece for the base printed a little bit like a butt, and uh, that is because I printed it in a very bad orientation, meaning there was a lot of suction on it, but it doesn't matter because the part that I need to see is actually printed okay. So I'm going to use this part anyway. If you uh, don't like that, then you will have to reprint your own part because my part was good enough for my model. It's then time to sand and make sure that these pieces fit. As you can see, I'm sanding around some of the edges that fit into each other. And also, I'm placing these parts onto sticks now so that it's going to be easier for me to paint. Once I've done that, it's super easy to just spray a base coat or actually technically a primer on all of these pieces. The primer that I use is Citadel and it is the black variety of Citadel spray paint. And I don't know why it does what it does, but it flattens so nicely and it looks so good. You can see the details on this model. It just clings to the model so nicely and I love using that paint. After I had Zenithal highlighted all the parts that I needed to be a little bit lighter, it was time to come in and paint something maybe you wouldn't believe is true. But if you want to paint yellow and you want to have some good contrast and a lovely gradient from dark to light yellow, then don't paint it anything other than pink or purple first. The color that I chose is uh, sort of halfway between pink and purple. Let's just call it a pinkle. And by spraying everything with pinkle, it means that I can now come back in with the zenithal over the top. This will give me uh, the best look that you can ever get for yellow. And I'm going to show you that in the next couple of shots. But first, you need to watch me paint the white over the rest of the model. Now, for the very important part, I used yellow ink. Now this is the Vallejo variety of yellow ink and you can see the gradients that this causes by going over the white, it is nice bright yellow, and going over the pinkle, it is orange. It turns orange, there's nothing else to say about it but because it turns orange, you've now got the shadows to your yellow. And it's a very, a very wonderful thing to do. Working on a belt, the best thing I can say is you need to paint this thing like a brown color because it's leather. So leather is usually brown and henceforth you will paint it brown. That is the only thing I can say about this. Getting onto the greens for her suit, I made a mistake, but the mistake was not this transparent green that I used as the main color. The mistake was this ink. This ink was a pretty decent amount of saturation, but the problem was I had put way too much white onto the model, meaning that there wasn't enough contrast, and later on I'm going to fix this, and I will show you the color that I use when we get to that point. Now to mask off the base, which some people would say is a complete failure, but to me, I think it's going to work perfectly fine. As you can see, I'm using a masking tape to mask off a section of this base, and I'm using a very sharp blade 
to cut out the pieces to make sure the masking is good. Now because I'm going to put a light, I sprayed it with chrome first. This is to block light. I then sprayed it with the black primer and uh, this is because that's the color that I want the base to be, is black. And as you can see, I unmasked all the pieces that I think the light should come through. Also, when you mask things, for some reason, it's never crisp. I don't know why, I absolutely hate masking with tape. You need to sand it. Contrary to what you would think you would be doing with a base, and after you've masked things, you think it's gonna be, it's never perfect, you need to sand it. Let's uh, stop worrying about that and get onto this base. Actually, I did a dry brush. I just used light gray colors, pretty much white that isn't white, and I just dry brushed to get some texture. Once I had the texture, I added color to it by using washes um, from Citadel, and I sprayed those in different directions and different places at in different intensities. I then came back with a uh, deck tan, mostly from the bottom and on the corners, because I wanted to light up the bottom of this with OSL to make it look as if the lights were actually shining on the bottom of this rock. And uh, later you'll see this actually works really well. Now I needed to also add a little bit of uh, saturation to that and I decided to use a red ink and spray that on the inside and also over the outside which uh, essentially turned that nice black base sort of reddish but I came back and I used a bit of black over the top so don't worry about that. As for the skin of Rogue, I'm going to paint it in a very similar fashion to I've painted in another video, which I will leave a link to the Elastrasia video in the top corner right, meow. And I started out with a purple base this time. Yes, it seems weird, but honestly it works so well. I don't know why I haven't done this before, but I really like this for certain types of skin. I also used a little bit of fluorescence um, pink at the bottom to give a really bright pinkish hue to the skin which I honestly really love the look of in models and if I'm painting something for myself I'm gonna paint it the way that I like it to look now you may have noticed that I have used a different skin uh, set to what I normally use in my videos I have used this set before but it is something different and if that confuses you I'm really sorry about that but you can see all the colors that I used one by one while I paint this hand and later on in near the end of the video when I paint her face I will show you the colors in the box and in the order that they are going to be used so that maybe will help you to do this if you wanted to use the same set or something similar. Painting her nails I just pretty much painted them with a slightly pinkish skin tone and painted the edges and uh, that's what I called the nails done. For the card, I printed this in clear resin and then I used pink uh, magenta, which is a fluorescent color, to paint it so that it looks like magic. I also then, while those pieces were drying, masked off the legs and as you can see, I sprayed them with the same green that I used before. And remember when I said it's really terrible masking because it seems to leave really horrible edges? One trick that I have found is if you take the mask off while the paint is still semi-wet, it usually doesn't leave as bad of a teared edge and doesn't look too bad. I also had to come back and catch all the edges on these because I actually masked them like a five-year-old preschooler. And unfortunately, that wasn't very good. On the buckles, I painted them black first and used a dark silver over the top to make them look like buckle color. Also, a cool little trick if you want to add a bit more depth and detail to your model is to take some washes of a similar value to your shadow and go over the recessed areas on the model. Just stick that in the recessed area. Don't go all over the place. You don't want wash everywhere, just the recessed areas. Here you can see I'm painting deck tan as a base coat over the top of the card and this will uh, be evident much later. I masked out the rest of Rogue's body. This really is honestly the only way to do her body Body because it's quite a complicated um, painting uh, scheme if you are wanting to airbrush it you certainly can't do it without that as for that green I spoke about earlier orc flesh 100% was way better than the green ink because it dried a lot darker and when I layered it it went even darker than the ink rather than it just being a slightly darker green it was a nice dark green giving me a good contrast between shadows and highlighted areas as you can see it looks almost velvety it's really a great color and helps to make this model pop now to work on that jacket the jacket is basically just a brown and realistically I could have kept the mask on and remasked the rest of the areas and maybe sprayed this with the airbrush but 
It's easy enough to just paint one tone of brown on it and come back later with the airbrush and add a bit of shadows that will very easily be able to be done without damaging the rest of the model. I used the black that goes around the trimming on her suit. That is just matte black from Vallejo. There's no tricks here. It's just matte black because it really thins down so easy and it just paints so well. It flows so nicely off your brush. It's one of my favorite blacks and I don't think I could actually do very much painting without it. I honestly, I'm so glad I found that paint. And this tends to happen for modelers from time to time. You may be struggling with a certain thing and one day you pick up a new product that you think maybe this could work but you don't really know and you try it and that is it for life. You will never change that product because it works so good for you until they stop making it and then you have a problem but realistically i found the black that works for me and i will now use that black forever until i die or they stop making that black uh speaking of uh colors that i really like to use another one is this saigo brown and this is really good for dark brown areas for some reason it just covers really really well and it just does a good job of flowing off the brush just as much as the other paint that I was talking about. I used that to go over the inside padding areas of her jacket. Again, I am not a fashion person and I don't know if this is the correct way of doing fashion, but I think it works and I feel like it did the job that I was hoping for, which was to just color the inner lining of the jacket. Anyway, speaking of uh, coloring lines, I used white to go over the lines on the symbol on her arms. First I painted black, then I used white, and I used white because I'm going to put red over the top of this and the white will give a really good um, base coat for the red to go on top of and be nice bright and red. This video was sponsored by 3Dverse Studios which, uh, funnily enough, is actually merging and becoming CA 3D Studios and it, technically this means that the video is sponsored by CA 3D Studios. Now if you've been keeping up with anything on my channel you'll know that CA 3D Studios has been sponsoring a couple of my videos and the quality of these guys is absolutely out of this world. I would 100% suggest go check out CA 3D Studios in my description down below if you are interested even remotely in 3D printing and collectible type things. Hopefully you were paying attention and earlier when I mentioned that we we're going to add some depth to the jacket This is that time where we're adding the depth I just use a wash and I spray this over very careful areas of the model making sure that I don't overspray any more on the lighter parts of colors that you don't want to get any brown onto also I went back and did some more of the lines on the suit this is something that I break up over time because it's really difficult to do and it takes a bit of concentration and I like to spend uh, less of my time uh, making fire come out of my head and just do things that are a little bit less uh, thought inducing also, this is a time when I glued in some parts. Realistically, you could use magnets on these parts, which might work really well, but I just glued mine. Here is the skin set that I used to paint this model. It's scale 75 velvet skin, and this is the same order that I used for the hand. I started off with a purple base coat, and I did the rest. The rest, you can go back and check if you really want to, but this is good enough to watch. I'm going to stop talking while I paint this face. To paint the hair I'm going to use a very similar technique to the jacket and I'm going to paint it the brown that I want it to be. I'm then going to come back and I'm going to highlight areas with a lighter version of that brown. I'm also going to spray a little bit of washes into that as well. I didn't show that but just believe me I did that. Also speaking of that card, do you remember the card that I painted? I didn't want to leave it white because uh, that would suck. I also was not going to paint anything on it and one of the easiest ways of doing something like this is to just print some transfers for yourself as you can see the transfer will stick off a little bit and you need to uh, neutralize this by using microset and microsol to make it flat and then spray a gloss clear over the top if you want it matte after that you have to spray matte after that too this will make it not look like it's a sticker 
for the eyes, Rogue's eyes are super easy because realistically there weren't even any pupils or anything to do so you couldn't make her look squint. I painted black as the base and I used deck tan to then shape the sections of the eyes that would be white. Apparently there is a fancy scientific word for that and I can't think of it right now. But uh, never fear because we're not going to keep them white so we don't need to know that fancy word because we're going to use magenta which is a fluorescent color from Vallejo, a very thin down and start to build up some bright uh, magic colors on the inside of her eyes. I'm then gonna glue the hair to her forehead, which is a, a good place to keep your hair. And then I'm gonna take gloss and I'm gonna gloss her lips. And I'm also gonna gloss her eyes because that is uh, the final thing you need to do before you call your model done. something in this video helps you when you decide to paint this particular statue or any other statue that might be rogue shaped or colored and if it did then hopefully you would like to join the patrons whom I'm going to thank right now for supporting me in this uh, YouTube uh, adventure that I have been going upon and if you would like to support me and help to make sure that the videos can continue being made then uh, perhaps consider supporting me on the patreon and speaking of support, there was a couple new supporters I would like to thank right now. Mark Jubero, Derek Sargent, Pavel Schiller. Those dudes are helping to keep the lights blind my eyeballs and helping to make sure that videos can be made next week and the week after 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 and the week after. Now of course, if you are not so inclined to uh, support over on the Patreon, then there are other ways of supporting the channel uh, by watching another video. That is one way. Also, if you shared this video with your gran. Now that the video is done, there is only one thing left to do and that is for me to tell you that if you don't like it, I don't really care and now you can just f*** off. I should have had an intro where I made a joke about their mum. That always gets them.